एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल माई नेम इज़ मंदीप एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट के मीन्स क्लस्टरिंग एल्गोरिथम एंड वी विल बी डूइंग इट ऑन वाइट बोर्ड सो लेट गेट स्टार्टेड सो बेसिकली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एज द नेम सजेस्ट दिस इज रिलेटेड टू क्लस्टरिंग दिस एल्गोरिथम इज रिलेटेड टू क्लस्टरिंग एंड दिस एल्गोरिथम इज अनसुप्रोवाइज लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम unsupervised learning algorithm because we do not know about our target variable we just kind of uh, try to do cluster our data uh, into different clusters so and it can be any number of clusters we can create so uh, the if i talk about the uses of this k-means clustering algorithm in real life it is used in recommendation engines recommendation engines means you can understand uh, any any ott platform such as let's say amazon prime netflix or any music app they always give you recommendation based on your browsing history and other uh, other factors and they give you some recommendation behind those recommendation recommendation engines works and behind those recommendation engine we can use k means clustering algorithm and uh, another use case i can think of is uh, this can be used in document clustering as well so these are some real life uh, use cases of this algorithm so now let's get started with how it actually works assume that we have um, our data of two dimensional type um, but this is not uh, really happens in our real world because we have n dimensional type of data in uh, our actual uh, real life problems um, but uh, we cannot uh, draw or visualize that n dimensional on any whiteboard or using any another software so i am taking as a two dimensional uh, example in my uh, this video to make you understand how k means clustering algorithm works and what are the steps involved into it so assume that this is um, this is my something uh, scatter plot and my data points are um, my data points are something like uh, are appearing on this data uh, on this scatter plot something like this i am taking on some random basis and so assume that uh, my data points are uh, appearing as on this uh, scatter plot and i have two dimensional data so what are the steps involved into k means clustering assume that we want to cluster this data into um, different cluster so k here represents the number of clusters we want to create so uh, assume that uh, in this in this particular example we want to create two cluster so for us k becomes 2 so how it actually works this k means clustering algorithm once we finalize that once we uh, finalize that we want to create this much of clusters that say k is equal to 2 so um then after that what we do we initialize uh, those that many number of uh, random data points on this plot uh, so here let's say we have two cluster so we will initialize two points anywhere on this plot so let's say i initialize them as here and here now these points are uh, considered these points are called as centroid so that's why i represented them with different representation c1 and c2 centroid are uh, you can assume that centroid is a point uh, which can be uh, understood as a center of gravity or the point to which other data points are very near and they and the density uh to near near to that uh, centroid is very high so i have uh, at first step i have initialized at this location you can initialize anywhere on this uh, on this two dimensional graph so after that what we do after that uh, we uh, kind of find the uh, distance of each data point from these centroid so for example we find the distance 
of this data point from this centroid and this data point from this centroid fine and how we do that to do that we what we do we kind of uh, we kind of uh, calculate the horizontal distance among those and then uh, we kind of do the median of uh, median uh, we calculate the median so this is something uh, more mathematical terms uh, you can uh, in simple layman terms you can understand that uh, you can understand that I will calculate the data uh, distance of this data point from this centroid and distance of this data point from this centroid and I will assign this data point to that particular centroid uh, where distance is minimum. So in this case uh, this distance is minimum compared to this distance. So that means my this data point will uh, belong to this one C1 and um, the similar way I repeat this process for all of the data point for all of the centroid. After that what we will do we will kind of draw a logical line which I just drawn before. Uh, so how I will do? So assume that I have drawn something like this. After calculating the distance of each data point and then uh, the data points which have minimum uh, which have less distance uh, from this centroid will come to this cluster and the data points which have less distance from this centroid are coming to this cluster so now i have created two clusters i have started uh, i have started with k val value of k is equal to 2 because i want to create two cluster of that my initial data so after initialized centroid i calculated the distance and i reorganized those data point into two cluster based on their distance minimum dist uh, so the distance of the points which are near to this they belong to one cluster and the distance uh, which is minimum uh, for, for which they belong to this cluster so here i have created two cluster but these cluster are not ideal so as a next step what i will do so you can think that this is one cluster and this is another cluster so as a next step what i will do i will move my centroid to this uh, new location and how i will move my uh, these two centroid into new location using uh, the center of uh, kind of the idea behind is that uh, we use the center of gravity that means where more data points are there so assume that my this centroid moved to here this location that means uh, because here uh, lots of data points are here and my this uh, this data point let's say moved to uh, my this location this my c1 which was earlier here this moved to so what is uh, this became my c2 and this became my c1 then i again will perform the same operation i will calculate the um, i will calculate the distance of each data point from each centroid so uh, distance of this data point from this centroid distance of this data point from this centroid and distance of this data point from this centroid as well so assume that i calculated the distance of this uh, data point from this centroid and this centroid it is very clear that this data point is near to this centroid so i will keep them into one cluster and the similar way uh, the distance of this data point is minimum as compared to this one so i will keep them into another cluster assume that after that uh, i draw some logical line and it becomes something like this now you would have observed that some are my earlier line was something here so this data point in my previous iteration was belonging to cluster 2 but after doing the reassignment of centroid and ca calculating the distance again now this data point has come to my cluster 1 this this data point particularly i am talking about earlier it was uh, 
uh, it was falling into my cluster too because my uh, you know my that logical dividing line was something here so so that means there is again some reshuffling has happened uh, among the data points they have been reassigned into uh, these cluster c1 and c2 so this process will keep doing uh, we will keep doing until we reach a point in which there is no more reassignment of data point among the clusters so assume that in my previous iteration i let's say i did 10 iteration just for an example on this data and after uh, 10th iteration i did I, 11th iteration in in 11th iteration all of the data points which were belonging to cluster 1 in 10th iteration are also belonging into 11th iteration the similar way let's say all of the data points which were belonging to cluster 2 in 10th iteration th those are also belonging uh, to the same cluster in 11th iteration that means there is no change in data points while assigning them into the cluster at that point of time we stops our uh, further dividing or uh, them into different cluster that means we have reached the point and we have uh, created uh, the right or optimal cluster for these data points so this may belong to one cluster and these may belong to another cluster so that's how k-means clustering algorithm works but uh, there can be one question as always how should we decide at the starting of the uh, this practice we randomly picked we that we want to create two cluster but uh, anyone could anyone else could say that uh, let's say i see there uh, are three perfect cluster inside in this uh, exam in this uh, particular so assume that my data point are something like this and assume that one person have uh, divided one person have divided them into C, cluster one and cluster two two cluster but another person could say that no i uh, see there are three perfect cluster so how should we decide the value of k to decide the value of k what we do there is a concept of uh, elbow method so what we do in elbow method uh, we let's say for this cluster this was my centroid and for this cluster let's say this was my centroid and for this cluster assume that this was my centroid so what we do in elbow method we calculate the uh, error sse sum of squared error which is uh, what is that so we calculate the distance uh, of each data point so distance of each data point from centroid and then we square it xi and c1 represent my centroid of uh, this cluster let's say this one so this one this cluster one and which will be my let's say i represent it as ssc1 sum of squared error and uh, let's say i have uh, i is equal to 0 to n data points so this could be n 10 20 50 n value could be anything so that means for this cluster i find ssc1 the similar way i find ssc2 for this cluster the similar way i find ssc3 ssc3 is nothing but or ssc is nothing but the sum of square of distances from the centroid after that i have found let's say for three cluster i found ssc1 ssc2 ssc3 in this case what we will do we will find the final ssc sum of squared error which will be sum of ssc1 plus sum of ssc2 plus sum of ssc3 sum of squared error 1 sum of squared error 2 sum of squared error 3 after this uh, once we find sum of squared error 3 we will plot a graph between uh, the value of k k value of k represents the number of cluster and the uh, ssc which we just calculated so how we we will do it assume that for this case this is my value of k 
number of cluster let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 and it could be any 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is my s s e sum of squared error so for each assume that i plotted i'm just for this let's say my data points are something like at 3 let's say my this and this this i got some 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 thing graph like this so you can see that in this graph uh, at the value of k is equal to 4 there is band uh, which is uh, this is uh, very similar to elbow of a human elbow of a human so that's why it is called as elbow method so we uh, in this example this k is equal to at this k is equal to 4 where this ssc is almost uh, we need to find this elbow point and uh, this can go till uh, the number of uh, data points in so maximum number of cluster in uh, in a particular data set could be equal to number of data points number of maximum number of cluster could be number of data points so assume that i have 100 data points so uh, maximum number of cluster it could have 100 because assume that each um, each data point is considered as a cluster so what will happen in that case in that case our ssc will become zero why our ssc will become zero because our ssc was calculated something like uh, this uh, centroid minus xi and distance so if my uh, every cluster will have only one data point so that will represent as a uh, centroid as well as x so these two value will be same and this distance this distance will come out to be zero and overall total distance will come out to be zero so this is how uh, elbow method works so the ideal value of k is the elbow point and how we need to find elbow point we calculate the ssc how we calculate ssc we calculate uh, respective ssc in each cluster then we sum them up and how we find ssc uh, it is very easy uh, distance distance among x minus c1 x1 is my data point and c1 is my centroid and then i scale it so this is uh, how i find ssc after finding ssc i sum them up after doing their sum i plot them on a graph then i find there will be a elbow point where you know your graph will be um, kind of converting from uh, almost slanting to horizontal at that point so that point we should always consider that point is the ideal or optimal point for that um, for that particular problem that means for in this example at k is equal to 4 i uh, i should create four cluster according to this graph for any particular problem so this is how uh, actually k means uh, algorithm work elbow method works and that's all for now in today's video thanks for watching till then uh, take care bye bye and stay tuned for more videos on machine learning thank you